not, do not be scared, my dear ones. If there emerges from this mystic place a sound uncommon, it is I. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Boys and girls, people everywhere, and my friends. I am the professor, Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is our business. And I want to show you some strange behavior of rotating things. Strange behavior. A so-called governor. Now you know physics has nothing to do with governors of states and provinces and things. This is another kind of a governor. It is a speed governor. Here it is. Two spheres on arms with some linkage on a vertical shaft. And now, what do I want to do? Well, I'll show you what I want to do. I want to spin that system. There it is. And you see the arms are coming up higher and higher at higher and higher angular speeds. Let me show you that. There we are. Now, why is it called a governor? I'll tell you why. If you look very sharply at it, the higher the speeds, the higher these come up, this sleeve moving on this shaft could well at some speed intercept a valve and cut off the fuel to the mechanism. And in this sense, it is called a governor. Now, there is an interesting question to ask. Could I have speed enough to put these in a horizontal plane? Could I? The answer is in this case, yes, because of that linkage. But if I had a system like this, the shaft, an arm, a ball, and this was rotated, I assure you that never, never could that be put in a horizontal line. And I leave that for you to think about. Why could I never do it? It is quite like the following. Supposing I had a ball on a string. You have seen me whirl a ball on a string in a vertical plane. Supposing I whirl the ball on the string this way. Can the string ever be horizontal? No, no, because the ball has some weight down and no tension in the string. Well, I'll leave it for you to think about. The professor does not explain the issue with the spinning ball at 90 degrees further. I'm going to explain the best I can. For those of you who do not wish to hear my explanation, you can stop the video now. To clarify, the professor is stating that one cannot spin a ball at 90 degrees on Earth. We are going to start with a person holding a length of string, and at the end of the string is a ball. For the initial example, the ball is stationary. There are several measurements we know about the system. The string has a length, denoted by the letter L, and in this example, L is equal to 1 meter. We also know the ball has a mass, denoted by the letter M. And in this example, the ball has a mass equal to 3 kilograms. We also know the string makes an angle relative to the vertical. And because we know the string is stationary for our first example, we know the angle the string makes relative to the vertical is equal to 0 degrees. Also because the ball is stationary, we know the velocity of the ball denoted by the letter V, equals zero. What we wish to calculate, given these variables, is the tension on the string, denoted by the letter T. From Newton's second law, we know that force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. And we know that force is in the unit of Newtons. So we know the tension on the string is in Newtons. We know the velocity of the ball is zero, so we know the only acceleration acting on the ball is the acceleration due to gravity. This is a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. As a reminder, the mass of the ball is 3 kilograms. So we know the tension on the string equals 3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. This equals 29.4 newtons. We know that if we give the ball a horizontal velocity, around a central axis, because the ball is attached to the string, and also due to the tension on the string caused by centripetal force, 
we know that the ball is going to follow a circular path. When the ball is no longer stationary and the ball now has a horizontal velocity, we are again interested in calculating the tension on the string. We know the string makes an angle relative to the vertical. Because the angle is greater than zero, the tension has an x direction and a y direction, denoted by tx and ty. For this example, the angle the string makes with the vertical is 30 degrees. In order for the ball to follow a circular path, as well as in order to maintain the 30 degree angle, we know the horizontal velocity has to be constant. We know if the horizontal velocity is constant, then the horizontal acceleration must be equal to zero. Meaning we again know the only acceleration acting on the ball is the acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to zoom in to the x and y components of the tension for clarity. From this diagram, we know the actual tension acting on the ball is equal to the hypotenuse. Given that we know the string makes a 30 degree angle to the vertical, we also know this angle equals 30 degrees. We can calculate T using either TX or TY. However, since we already calculated TY in the last example, that is the best way to try and calculate T. From the previous example, we know that TY equals 29.4 Newtons. From trigonometry, we know that TY divided by T equals the cosine of 30. So we know that T equals 29.4 divided by the cosine of 30. So we know that T equals 33.95 Newtons. Given this example, the tension on the string is 33.95 Newtons. We know that as the horizontal velocity increases, the radius of the circle the ball travels also increases. As the horizontal velocity increases, we know the tension on the string increases as the centripetal force increases. Professor Julie Sumner Miller suggested that the ball cannot reach 90 degrees. I will give two reasons why. We are going to do the calculations if the angle the string makes with the vertical is 90 degrees. Following our last example, which was using the angle the string makes with the vertical for our calculations, we would write the tension is equal to 29.4 divided by the cosine of 90. We know the cosine of 90 is equal to zero, meaning the tension on the string in order to keep it at 90 degrees would have to be infinite. If we go to our original example, we were able to resolve the calculations by saying that all the ball's acceleration was in the y direction, meaning the acceleration in the x direction was zero. To resolve the 90 degree example, we would have to say that all the ball's acceleration is in the x direction, and the acceleration in the y direction would have to be zero. The only way for this to be true is if gravity was zero, or could at least turn off every so often. Because gravity is constant on Earth, you will never be able to spin a mass at 90 degrees on a string on Earth. Supposing I whirl the ball on the string this way, can the string ever be horizontal? Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Yes, yes, yes! No, no.